Welcome to Dark Strikers. Hello and welcome back to the channel. So thanks very much for joining me today. Gav here, Lucy's on the camera. Hello. And today I'm going to feed these. You've seen me do these many a times before in these enclosures, but what I'm going to talk about today is food, what you feed your tarantulas. And we'll just get straight into it. So when we start and we've got smaller sort of slings, we can usually start with micro black crickets, the little tiny ones, they jump absolutely everywhere, but they are absolutely perfect to start some tiny, tiny slings on. But the only difference with that is these do not last long. So you buy them, feed your spiders, you try and keep these going for a few days, they just die straight away and they just pretty much go. The reason why we're talking about food with spiders is what we're doing with these, if you've noticed on the last few videos, uh, I feed the same with crickets, 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 that's all you see. And the reason for that is I'm not an expert, but I'm competent in what we're doing, Lucy and I, and we've learned enough with the spiders. And some get problems with molts as they start getting to certain sizes and absolutely healthy, but then they get into this mold and for any unknown reason, goes bad and they have trouble molting and then it doesn't really connect up afterwards and then they eventually die. So what I've been doing is worms. So if you go into Mario worms, which are a bit bigger, we've also got these meal worms, which are a lot smaller, which I'm gonna to use today. But what we're talking about is if you do with Mario worms, which I've seen a lot of people do when a spider gets to about this size or more, it's too heavy on the protein content. So I think too much of that and a stable diet will then impact the spider when they go to molt. It's overloading them and they can get so fat and the abdomen could be absolutely huge. It causes problems during molting. So what I tend to do is use crickets. Even you'll see some of these are a good size spider in a minute, but I use these sort of size, medium sized crickets. Nothing too massive but you can just do a couple of them at any one time. But the protein content of them is so much lower than it is for these mealworms. Because if you've noticed, if you keep these at home, these gorge themselves all day, mm. every day, until they cocoon to change into a beetle. Whereas these don't, they will nibble on vegetation such as this. And then obviously, you know, they don't get that much content. So what I'm trying to say is even, you can use these as well, like locust. We're gut loading these because these aren't for the spiders. These are for a chameleon that we've got in the So, but what we're trying to do is for the last, I think all these and these enclosures that you've seen on the videos for the last six months, maybe more, just purely crickets. But now I'm gonna turn it into these mealworms just to give them variety in the diet and it should just help with the health. So they all bring different sort of properties. But what you'll see is some will take these straight away Others would be terrified and they won't because they move different from the crickets. They're not sure what it is, it. are they? Yeah, they get completely used to it. But this is just my tip for you if you're keeping tarantulas and you don't know, do not keep them on the same diet. You can put them on these mealworms, I'll probably say for a couple of weeks to a month, maybe a bit more, that's absolutely fine, depending on how big the mealworms are and how often you're feeding. Crickets are the best one because of the protein content is so much lower, which is good. You can manage it and you'll find they will eat two, three crickets every few days, but you'll see the abdomen and the spider doesn't get bulging. It stays a good size. But when you stick to the mealworms, they will retain that fat content and protein content because if the protein's not used, it converts to fat, so into calories and into fats, and then it gets stored. It's no so, different to us, really, is it? Having much, a balanced diet. <laughs> we burn ours off, we're constantly moving. A spider, you can see, I've got plenty, that me and Lucy have, where they will just sit there mm. for months on end, and they will not move. So they don't actually burn the actual um, energy stores that they mm. reserve, they just literally retain it. So the best thing to do is just swap the diet around every so often. I've done it six months on cricket, now I'll probably do a few weeks, maybe four at the most on mealworms, and then I'll go back to crickets. And every now and then I'll throw in dubia roaches, but we're still building up our colony, oh, so yeah. not cutting into that at the minute. The bigger ones might have a grub as well, mightn't they? And then sometimes yeah. locusts. Yeah, what we do is we have, I've got none left, but you have beetle larva. It's a very large grub about this big white. I'll probably get a picture and put it on the screen. But what I tend to do with that is if I've got a female ready to be gravid and I'll feed her up on that so she's got the fat stores. 
or before she goes into molt, like maybe a few months before, store on that. So if you're going into pairing, she's absolutely full. There's less chance of her eating them out. Mm. So that's my process on it. So let's just get in and see what these have done. These have not eaten any mealworms for well over six months. So some of them should freak out and some will not take them. So let's just get straight in. I like to think that it's nice for them as well, that they, <laughs> that they enjoy having a different diet and not the same thing all the time. Yeah, but there are three tubs here. And I want to get these done first because inside is a giant crab spider, which is the Heteropoda ventoria, which is a huntsman spider. And these you've seen on the previous video, I'll put a link up above of how I keep these. And They've when got we so keep much these, bigger, haven't they? They have, you'll see in a minute, one of them stood in a pouncing position. Mm -hmm. You blink, these are gone. Yeah. But we couldn't stop them running out of the enclosure. So you see in the previous video, I've designed it where the cork box stuck to the top. So when they run away from me, they run up there, but they don't seem to run over, which I don't know why, because they could easily do it. So see where this one is. Well, that right, so they've got okay, a lot bigger. A lot bigger. Yeah, I, can't I can't see, but shining, right, so sorry. Give me a sec, I'm just gonna, but you need to keep an eye on it now. Yep. So much bigger. They're fast growers, aren't they? Uh, these are, yeah, literally, I think at the minute they're molting. Um, I'd say at least two of them are doing a two months a month. Yeah. They're just, I was just really gonna say every rapid two weeks. at the minute. But the temperature we keep them in is quite high, so um, this is what they're enjoying. These have never eaten anything like this. They've purely been on crickets. Mm. And you remember how long it took us to get them to take crickets. They would leave it at the bottom and they would just do it in the nighttime. But now they will actually take from me. But this is a different food source. This is the only time I find worms quite hard is you don't want to leave the worm in, but a lot of them don't always want to take from you, do they? Yeah, so she's right at the top still. Okay, I can't see now, so I'm going off what Lucy's saying. Can you see her eyes? Still at the top? Yep. Right, she should, they're used to us, so they should just take off us. That's it. Whoa. Oh, no, she ran around the back. <laughs> right, so where did that go? She ran straight around the back. Right, and you see, as I said, they didn't come up over the top. They're quite well fed. I've left that worm in there, but they are not used to the movement of the worm. But you can see it's got good size abdomen on it. No idea if this is male or female. There she is. Right, if you see this one's a different coloration, it's slightly darker. What fat bum. But you can see they're extremely fast moving. And they can jump, by the way, ladies and gents. Mm -hmm. The only thing I hate about these mealworms is when you pick them up, they wriggle and jump around absolutely everywhere. I hate how they twirl up the tongs and then Ooh. you haven't got a lot of space for them to grab. Are you going to take it, little one? You can see her eyes. Right, if this was a cricket, they would be on it in a shop, which you've seen in a previous video. They grab video. it in seconds, don't they? Nope. But what I'm going to try and do is just see if I can entice. Let me know if you can see, because I can't see nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's bigger than she looks. As well. oh, that's blurry. It's focusing on the top. If you stay still. Oh, it's really blurry. Oh, yeah, she, she grabbed it. it, yeah. Okay, so she's had it. That's her first one. She's never had one. Oh, it's so annoying though. It's really blurry because it's just focusing on the bark. But yeah, she devoured that. Oh, is that her there? Has she done a hole come through? She has. Oh, yeah, look. Just see her little legs peeking out. Right, so this is the Pulsifuria Vitata. Vitata. Can't remember which one it is. Uh -huh. it's not, is it the ghost ornamental? I can see a little legs poking out. Oh, I always get confused with the Vitata and the Tigrina Waselli. One's ghost and right. one's... Can you see? Yeah. Right, first time, she's never had one. And normally these could be quite jumpy. I think she's going to fly out. Oh, that's perfect. The key is to let the animal do the movement, mm -hmm. not you. Because it can sense our movement and then it puts them off. Difference in vibrations. Ah, yeah. oh, she knocked it down. Oh, she's gone back. You're not sure. It's because they move different, isn't it? Maybe. No, 
she's gone <laughs> no, down. You see the little sure. blues on her pads. Yeah, so that's another one, not sure. Yeah, she's gone. It's because they do move weird. You put them in and then they just fold themselves back up. They're unsure. So, nope, she's not gonna. Which one's this one? Um, the one I can't say. Oh, this is Samopius Echilacitus or Echilacus. I can never say this one. Um, the light won't show the label. Right, this one's right at the top. And a little cocoon. Yeah. All Some of, of these should tunnels. just not even be bothered. They'll just come in and eat straight away. But you can see from the movement there. the movement's completely different to a cricket. You know a cricket will run right up to the front of the tarantula, stay still, oh she's in threat pose. And this way you can see her fangs. It's literally fell under nah, a really she's, she's backed off. Right, this one needs no introduction. Caribbean adversity colour, I would doubt if this one's gonna win. She's so food aggressive. But um, we've never given her one of these, but I don't think she'd have an issue anyway. But if you can see her abdomen's looking quite big, so I'll just try with the one, she should easily take this. I'll put this here. And even when they don't move, she still knows it's there. So this is the Blue Frank Ephibibus cantharanthus. I don't probably have said that properly. And as you can see, this one sat out. I'm gonna see if I can show you the coloration and see if we can get this one to take. It's normally a good taker. Oh, there we go. Oh, I've never had one of these before and that's absolutely fine. Gonna go straight in, go and get it. It's just bit the leaf. Can't quite get hold of that one. She's used to crickets. Look at those fangs. Is it gonna leave it be? This one's going to take either. Whether it's getting ready to molt, I'm not too sure, but I'll keep an eye on this one. Okay, so this stunning species here is the Samopius victori, the daft mall or the Mexican half and half. What we'll do is just going to try this one as well. This one's not been um, a fussy feeder, so it should be okay. Yeah, look at that. It takes straight away, but unfortunately dropped it there. I know I'm going to leave this. There you go, took it. So I'm going to leave this one to enjoy that, but just look at the coloration and look at the eyes. Stunning species. Okay, here this is a juvenile Brachypelma classy, the Mexican pink. The abdomen's a good size in this one, so I'm not sure if it's going to take, but this one's never had a mealworm, so I'll soon find out in a second. But Yep, okay, so straight in there, just needed to wait a second, listen to the movement or feel it. But that's another good take there. Brilliant, on to the next one. Right, this one's another Cantuscoria genicolata, and this one I've called Halley. Don't know if it's a female yet, but I've been giving this one crickets as well, so this is the first time on one of these worms. Shouldn't have a problem with this species. 
but it's just they've got used to the amount of movement from cricket so these mealworms tend to be a bit slower like it's not noticing a difference and now she's lost it let's try another So you can see that they are so used to having crickets where the crickets run to them, they grab it, bite. These, they subtle movements, so they have to work a little bit harder. So it's good to change up the diet once in a while. Okay, and in this one, doesn't look much of an enclosure because this one's just permanently tipping up its hide, the water dish, digging around, making tunnels, destructing the tunnels. But this is the Mega Fabima Robustum. I can't wait for this to get a little bit bigger because I want to do a nice big enclosure for this one. Um, normally a really good eater, uh, when they're small can be quite skitty as well, but we'll see, we've not had one of these before, we'll see if it'll turn around. See what it does. So it's made a tunnel underneath the hide, it's not even going to go for it is it? Finally coming out. Oh, look at that, look. look at the coloration, absolutely stunning. There we go, and it's finally taken. And thank you very much for watching. Please comment and like, and I'll see you on the next one.